Hey, Flats Class fans, Captain CA here, and I've got another great tarpon tip for you today. Now, this is part two in a series of three that we're going to do on rod and reel setups and, and things like that that you're going to need to know because tarpon season starts or is underway in many places, but starts typically uh, in May, so we're only two weeks away. Now, I broke out the big gear for you natural bait guys today, and we're going to do it step by step here, show you how we like to fish on the beaches, how we fish in the passes and inlets around the bridges. So that's what my goal is today, is to show you a little bit of this. So let's start breaking it down. Let's talk about the type of gear you're going to need to be able to catch tarpon of this class. I'm talking 80 to on up to 150 pound fish, maybe even bigger. So it's not going to be the same gear that you would employ for bull red fishing, for monster snook in the passes and inlets, or even big jack crevel. Any of that stuff is not going to be able to endure the battle with the Silver King. So what are we going to use? Now, I set these rods up to live bait fish. That's right, I said live bait fish. Remember, the last video was on artificials, and I have one more coming for artificials with, for you baitcaster fans. But this one is the traditional setup that we use here in Florida for catching big tarpon. So this is for the folks that like to use thread fins, pinfish, mullet, ladyfish, and crabs, both blue crabs or past crabs or whatever you, uh, you decide. But these setups are designed to fight fish and fight them well. So let me show you what I feel is going to be a better rod for all of you uh, in scenarios, I would say to catch tarpon in the passes and in the inlets, or maybe some of those bigger, deeper um, tarpon that are on reefs. Uh, you catch them maybe on a big crab flush. Uh, this is a rod that I have a lot of confidence in. This is an eight foot extra, extra heavy. This is the Terramar, if you will. Terramar double X. Um, this this rod is designed with very, with very little forgiveness so i mean you can barely bend the tip on this it's got just enough tip to make a nice long cast uh, if you have the right braid set up and you do everything right you fill the spool up you're going to be able to make a nice long cast with this now the 10,000 is a 4.91 gear ratio. It has five plus one stainless anti-rust bearings. Um, keep in mind, all these Shimano Saragosas, this is the 10,000 size, have the Hagani body. They have the Hagani cold forged gears. Um, they're, they have that IPX8 waterproofing system, cross carbon drag. They, they really have all that. They have that Infinity Drive technology, if you will. So both reels have that in common. But what is uncommon between these two, because the other rod setup is going to be the 8,000, is this 10,000 actually doesn't pick up as much line as that 8,000. It only picks up 40 inches per handle turn. You're like, 40 inches? That's a lot. Well, when you're battling a tarpon, you want to have as many as much leverage on them as you can. Now this one packs about 33 pounds of drag for the reel itself, uh, max drag that is. It will hold about 360 yards of 50. Now I put 40 on and you're gonna say, why wouldn't you put the max that you could put on? Well, the max I can put on, I can put like 80 on here if I want. But 40 uh, is gonna give me a little longer cast um, especially if I decide to throw some lighter baits or more delicate baits where I got to lob them. 
and it's going to give me well over 400 yards of line and that's what i have on here i put very little backing on here so i know i've got more than 400 yards uh, in all my setups, just so you know, and this is the float setup that I like to use, I'll tie a short bimini, okay? Very short. It's not even a foot long. Then I do the no name or Bristol knot. And I know you're saying, wow, you put a long tag on that. Yes, I put a long tag on that. I expect to have a battle. And that's why I doubled the 40 pound to make it almost like an 80 pound thickness in the bimini. Then I've got that Bristol or no name knot. I've got a big float to support a bigger bait, like a pinfish or a big thread fin. I want them in the water column at the set depth. This is an adjustable float so that when that string or that meatball of tarpon are moving into it, there's nowhere for him to go. He's going to be eye level with them. Then I've got a long length. I'm going to say about 60 inches of 60 pound fluorocarbon line. Now, I'm using Seaguar, but you use whatever you want. I'm not sponsored by Seaguar. I just use Seaguar. So I've got about 60 inches of it. And then I double palomard um, with a palomar knot here to a 7 aught circle hook. Okay. Now, why a 7 aught? It depends on the size of your bait. Naturally, I would go down in size if I was using a smaller crab. I might go up in size if I'm using a big mullet, but let's just say I'm using something about like this. It, it might be a, a big Spanish sardine. It might be a little six or seven inch mullet or something like that. A size seven spine or a thread fin. And depending on which species it is, I would just nose hook it and allow it to bounce around and swim this float around until it was positioned. I'd be keep feeding line out to where I can see the tarpon and then this happens and this happens when you see that float get nervous and it starts to get pulled under and it's such a gradual straightening out of the line and it it's your heart is pounding in your chest you're going to be reeling as fast as you can on this on this rod that's where that 40 inches per handle turn really comes in, in, into play. As Soon as you get tight and you feel like the rod's being pulled toward the fish, you're gonna come tight on them and lift the rod at an angle that's gonna be maybe at 11 o'clock because as soon as he feels it, he is gonna jump. And then as soon as he jumps, you're going to have to lean forward and point at him. If you lean forward and point at him, he will not fall on a tight line. That way he cannot pop the hook out or break the beak of the hook, who knows. Um, he, he'll be in a vulnerable position. Be ready because typically you'll have to reel to get tight again and just as you're trying to lift, he may jump again. You'll have to stab at him again and lean forward. We call that bowing to the king. If you can survive that first five, six, seven minutes of that crazy, acrobatic jumping around and you can get that fish in a regular rhythm where you can pull on them and then reel down pull on them up here and reel down and keep the heat on them you will land your first tarpon or maybe your hundredth if you're seasoned um, but that motion and trust me the 40 pound braid on this setup is plenty heavy enough i only go that light just for the added advantage of being able to cast farther and having a little less reflectivity, if you will, so the fish don't see it. That's why I use that blue Power Pro braid because um, it floats up there on the surface and they don't see it. It kind of blends in. You do everything right. You can land a tarpon with a setup like this, a big setup like this, especially with this. In, you know, I talked about that Infinity Drive technology. What that does is it allows you to reel when this thing is under pressure. I'm not talking about reeling against the drag. You don't do that. But I'm just saying when you've got to really wind down and it's pulling hard and I've got that drag really nutted down, I might not have it all the way to the 33 pounds of max drag, but I might have it at a point where it's about 20 pounds of max drag and you're wondering if you're gonna die. You can't even pull it out and that fish is still taking it. 
if, if you can handle that, you're going to win because the idea is to beat the fish early so that you do not have to have an hour, hour and a half long battle with these fish. You shouldn't have that with this rod setup. Now I want to talk about this 8,000 Saragossa and this extra heavy. Remember, this is the eight foot extra, extra heavy. This is the extra heavy. So it's not quite as big a setup, but for beach fishing, I love this. And this is really the rod setup that I use probably 75% of the time. Okay, beach fishing. There's a little bit of a difference between throwing this 10,000 size on the eight foot extra, extra heavy rod and throwing the 8,000 Saragossa on the extra heavy rod. Now, it's the same um, brand of rod. These are the Terramar double X's, and here is your specs if you want to look at them. Maybe I'll have the guys add them in the, in the description below. Now, the 8,000 reel is a little bit different, and I set it up different uh, for the most part. This reel is exactly like that reel, but with these differences. Still Hagani body, Hagani coal forged gears, cross carbon drag, uh, IP8X waterproofing uh, body to keep the salt out of it. Um, it. It has that infinity drive, which is important. You know, maybe I didn't say it enough when we were talking about the 10,000. That allows you to easily reel. This has got a nice, comfortable handle on this reel. It allows you to easily reel when a fish is trying you know, when you, you got you feel the weight of the fish and you got a reel, it's not like this is sticky. It's easy, easy to turn. That's why I use these things. Um, the 8000 has differences, believe it or not, because it's a 5.61 ratio versus the 4.9 ratio to one. It literally picks up more per handle turn. I get 42 inches out of this one where I only get 40 out of that one, but that's a lower geared reel. It's a little higher geared reel. Um, this also has a higher max drag. Yeah, 8,000 has a higher max drag. This is 35, okay, 35 pound max drag, that's 33. That doesn't matter with this because I only pack this with 30 pound super slick uh, Power Pro V2. And you're like, well, why would you do 30 if you're max? I do 40 sometimes, but 30 does such a fantastic job with making a long cast with small pass crabs. It's typically when I'm throwing this rig, I'm throwing these small pass crabs hooked to the corner of the shell. So when you have a small, not this, this is a kicker crab. I'm just showing this for size. You need to be able to sling this and make that long cast. And with this extra heavy, um, set up. You got a little bit more tip, a little bit more tip, so it's a little easier to, to cast light baits. So we employ this a lot more. Uh, most of my fishing, like I said, is on the beach. Um, and that's not to say that you can't use the 10,000 on the beach. You can use the 10,000 on the beach, and I do quite often, especially if I need um, anglers that aren't maybe as physically fit to fight a fish, I will put that rod out there so that we can hook them on that rod. But this is a lot of fun. I mean a lot of fun. Now you might say, I really want to get a closer look at the business end of this. You hear that cross carbon drag? That cross carbon drag dissipates heat quite well. So I can tighten that thing, really nut that thing down, put a lot of drag pressure on fish, and you're still not going to bust them off even with 30. So Let's start off with the, the hook rig here. The hook rig, if you will, is this is a, uh, a five aught, okay? Five aught trocar. Now the five aught trocars, these are some pretty strong carbon hooks. They'll go right through the bony jaw in a, in a nanosecond in a tarpon. So they work really well. The bigger hooks that I typically use when I don't have the trocars on that big rod are these Mustad Demon Circles because they just have a wider gap. They do a good job for me. But anyhow, you'll notice that this one, I have uh, snelled the hook. I don't know if you can see it, but I snelled the hook. And I do that just so I have, when I see those fish, that string of fish or that, that just wad that's coming and I kick it out there, I can reel that crab 
just like this across the top and let them start to swim down because I free line this most of the time. Occasionally we'll put a cigar float on it, but I'm usually free lining this. I'll reel it and he'll make that little wake and then I'll drop him and he'll just start to kick down like that and they react immediately. Now all this stuff is super light. I'm only using 40 pound. I got about 60 plus inches of 40 pound uh, cigar fluorocarbon leader on this. And I'll open my bale here and pull out and let you see the knots. Uh, again, the leader is connected to a, about a 10 or 12 inch bimini. Um, that's my, my leader connector right there. That's the Bristol or the no name knot. Long tag, it's important. And then I've got, you know, a double line here, as you can see. Uh, that's my bimini and it's about a 12 inch bimini. It doubles that 30, makes it like, uh, like a 60, if you will. But these can endure those quick fights. Now, when you're fighting tarpon on the beach, it is a, it's a much different game than when you hook them in a pass or an inlet. You still have the jumps when you hook them in the pass and the inlet, but the jumps are only one, two, maybe three, and then they're down and they're sounding and you're having to pull on them with that extra, extra heavy rod. This is only an extra heavy rod. So I recommend using this when you're fishing depths no deeper than 15 feet, 20 max because those fish can't sound, they have to jump. So you're gonna have a lot more jumps with a setup like this. So a lot more paying attention. You see that line angle come up and that fish jumps, be ready. Be ready, come right back, start leaning on them. The number one thing with tarpon fishing, especially when you're fishing this stuff and we're fishing the time of year, the prime time, not the early part of the season, not the late part of the season, there are sharks around. So you need to be able to handle these fish in short order so that you don't lose a fish to a shark. What happens if a shark is chasing your tarpon around? You know what you do? You grab that spool and you break them off. And it's easy to do it with this setup because it's so light. Pop them off, you're gonna get another tarpon hookup. I promise you. Do not feed the tarpon to the sharks. Now there's one more thing I wanna tell you. And the other thing I gotta tell you is this. There's a point in every tarpon battle where you're tired, but so is that fish. Now, you have to understand how much pressure you have to put on the fish. This, this tip is not, it's kind of a bonus tip as, as far as this gear goes. But on a small skiff such as mine, the fish will start rolling out in front of the, the skiff two or three rod lengths. And the fish comes up, gets a breath of air, and is just traveling below the surface, and it seems like nothing's happening. You have to break that rhythm because you're probably not putting enough pressure on them. So when that fish is coming up to get that breath of air, put your rod angle down and pull his head through his tail. I know it sounds weird, but if you restrict his forward progress and you're punishing him every time he tries to come up for air and you'll pull him back down, especially if you can stand up and you pull him back down, you'll wear him out twice as fast, twice as fast. Having someone drive the boat and follow these fish for thousands of yards down the beach is a challenge. You're not only messing up other people's fishing, but you're you're allowing the possibility of something bad to happen to your catch. So if you can battle this fish with short pumps, reel downs, right amount of drag pressure, and really tie the right knot so that you can add that added pressure. And even though you're tired, if, if your co-angler, uh, who is now your grab man, your face grab man, if he can encourage you to put that pressure on you, you should be able to beat most of these fish, whether you're fishing them on the beach or fishing them in the pass, in 40 minutes or less. That's average time. Um, I have clients that will, will, will make a fish come to boat side in 20 minutes. And then I have clients that it gets closer to an hour, but the average is about 40 minutes. But you don't want it to be any longer than it has to be. When the fish comes boat side, make sure you grab the fish like you're not going to let it go and try to get that hook out of it and let them go away in good speed. It's important, okay? If you like what you're seeing here on Flats Class YouTube and you're learning stuff, I mean really learning stuff, um, 
give us that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and please, by all means, tell your friends. It's my job to make you a better tarpon angler this summer. If you wanna or are interested in getting any of the gear that I showed you here today, go to sodiumusa.com. You can buy all of it right there online. Okay, that's all I've got for you.